Hi guys, happy Tuesday. <laughs> so, alright, today we're gonna just go back and uh, go over more of the... Uh, what am I even reading? I forget. I totally forget what I'm reading. I, I, I don't know, but it's really interesting. It, it's getting even better, so I love it. But yeah, I think something special is coming up for me and a friend. I think we're going to do a video together on witch blood and why if you're born into a generation or a family of witches, why that does not make you a witch. So yeah, going to get a lot of hate for that one, but it's true. All right, so this is so interesting. I mean, the once we really get into it, I mean more Robert Cochran. Oh my God, it's it's interesting. So. All right, now some traditional witch groups will not allow any metal in the circle. Very true, because fairies don't like metal or iron and so on and so forth, etc., etc. So this is because they believe that it in interferes with the flow of earth energy uh, along the spirit paths and also disturbs and drives off the spirit guardians who protect the sacred ancient sites or power centers. So instead of using metallic implements... They mark out their meeting uh, ground or circle with old-fashioned farm tools made from wood. And that is amazing. I love that. So we have a ton of those laying around here. So they may also use an old-fashioned ritual knife with a wood horn or bone handle and a flint or an obsidian blade. Now, other traditions have no problem with metal tools. I do. I, I use them. And use them to cast the circle, direct power, and control, and subdue um, manifested spirits. So they liken the sword, for instance, to the plow used to mark out fields from the surrounding wilderness and define or destroy, or yeah, destroy boundaries. So the ritual knife or athame, bleh, which was originally a killing weapon used for sacrifices and blood offering. <laughs> Poor Wiccans. All right, so reflecting this original use. Now, in the medieval grimoire, King of Sol Key of Solomon, um, the Magus is instructed to consecrate it by dipping the blade in the blood of a black cat. Um, an iron knife was also used by the old cunning folk to banish elementals, nature spirits, ghosts, and demons. Maybe even people. <laughs> Ordinary people would place a knife or a pair of shears or scissors on windowsills or under the doormat to prevent witches and fairies entering the house. Huh. So it is possible that the Coven Sword is comparatively a recent addition to traditional witchcraft. So it may have been borrowed from the Golden Dawn type workings when ceremonial magicians joined the old covens. So yeah. The traditional craft is older than the Golden Dawn. Most, mostly all of these new age neo, neo pagan uh witch groups. So, in a former time, only wealthy, uh, only a wealthy gentleman could afford a sword, obviously, because it was very expensive back then. Uh, they were and uh, carried by the average peasant and were the weapon of choice of a knight or noble. So it is also a possibility that where the magister um, of the local coven was also the lord of the manor or a uh, wealthy land owner, then he may have um, introduced a sword um, into its set of ritual tools. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a sword. I have a machete. <laughs> I like my machete better. Now, the stone in the craft can represent several different things. Several different things. So sometimes it's the central altar on which the other tools are displayed and offerings are made. And I have so many of those outside, and they're amazing to use. And I mean, they're beautiful. Once you really get like all the weeding I've done and all the you know the yard work and everything that I've done and you know, I post it on my public page just so you guys know, you know, when I'm complaining. And yeah, that's what I do every single day. So, um, yeah, somebody made a really weird comment, and I kind of took offense to it. Uh, why are there no dandelions in your yard? There's not a dandelion in sight. It's too well manicured. Because it's my fucking yard. That's why. That's why, Judith. Okay, so it can also be an actual stone head or standing stone, sometimes phallic in shape, obviously. So, referred to um, as the godstone or with the godstone or godstone, godstain or godstone. Sorry, I have tons of those. I love them. Now, in this form, that sounded really bad. <laughs> in this form, 
stone is in Omphala, Om Omphalus, Omphalus representing the Axis Mundi. It symbolizes the Horned One and his solar phallic energy, and can be used in initiation rites and sex magic. So it can also take the form of a wet stone used to sharpen the blade of the sword or athame. So other forms of this ritual object are crystals used for scrying and healing, hagstones for protection, psychic self-defense, and turn the page. Facilitating visionary dreams. So, and we have Troy stones for trance work. So this ladder is a flat stone inscribed or painted with a spiral or maze design, or you know any other suitable magical sigil. So it's supposed to bring you into trance, which it does. This symbol is meditated on and strongly traced with a finger, or slowly traced with a finger until a light trance is achieved, allowing the user to contact the spirit world. Now, in general, stones are powerful magical objects and natural psychic batteries that can store magical energy. Now, what, what is that word I wrote? Cords. Cords are used um, as the symbolic items of ritual clothing in initiations as spirit traps and in spells. So, in their latter use, they are often knotted and used to bind a spell or, when the knot is undone, release... Um, well, I just totally... I don't know where I went. Well, I lost my... My, my spot. Release the spirit force or the spell's inherent power. So a cord that is used in this way is sometimes known as a witch's ladder and may have feathers, bones, and a, or beads added to it. So I really do like that. I like the witch's ladder. I love cord magic. You guys know that. I do. I use a lot of cord magic in my craft. Now in Robert Cochran's tradition, cords are worn as symbols of the hangman's noose and are connected with the um, a binding of fate, no, the goddess fate, the ultimate name, um, according to Cochrane, of the goddess of the witches. I mean, there's a lot of controversy about him. So cords are also associated with the witch's rosary, which, yeah, I don't understand that one, because there's no such thing as a witch's rosary, really, used for meditation and acquiring trance stage, states, and um, as a symbol of subjugation, submission, surrender, and discipline. Now, in some traditional groups, they are used with the scourge as a means of ritual purification and raising psychic and psychic power. So it's pretty interesting. It's really, really interesting. I love it. It's just, oh, I love this stuff. So, all right. So now in um, hmm, old craft covens, the modern trend towards running organizations by committees is not encouraged. And for that reason, they can appear to outsiders to be um, autoratic in nature. So, however, officers are usually um, elected by the members or chosen by the spirits to take the specific role in running and administration of the covine or clan and its rituals and magical workings in accordance with their personal skills and natural abilities. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting. But I, you know, I don't. I, I would love to join a coven, but uh, I just like it by myself. It's it's so much better. It's easier. Oh, and happy uh, uh, Maybon May or whatever you guys call that. Autumn Equinox. <laughs> so these roles are usually the Magister, which is the Master, or Man in Black, or Devil. The magis Magistra, from the Latin Mistress, Lady, or Dame. The Maid, or Maiden. Uh, the Verlet, and the Summer. Summoner. So there may also be other additional um, officers, such as the scribe, the seer, or the mistress of the robes, whose functions um, are self-explanatory, obviously. So, yeah, I would probably have somebody be the, uh, hmm, I don't know, uh, the mistress of the brooms. No, I'm kidding. Totally kidding. So, in most traditional groups, though, it is the master, or magister, or devil, or witch master, who ru rules the coven, and is the MC or master of ceremonies presiding over the rituals. So the, me the female um, magistra or lady takes the role of the priestess and is also the channel in which the authority and power of the goddess flows into the circle. Usually, not always, she will take a secondary position to the male leader or um, in some progressive groups the master and mistress will rule together equally. Now, in his absence of the magis magister, the lady can take over his role completely, which I like. Equal equality, all inclusiveness. That's what it's all about. So, um, or no, she, she may also have a uh, young, younger female assistant, known as a maid or maiden, who can uh, 
deputize for her when she is not present in this circle of art. Now, in the Cochrane tradition, although the Magister normally leads the clan, the real power behind the throne is the maid, and she grants him his authority. So that's really interesting, the roles that they actually play in traditional craft circles and covens, and so I, I just really, really like that. So tomorrow, let's see, we will do wait, Robert Cochran. We're, we're going to go into Robert Cochran and the controversy surrounding him. And I mean, I just think it's really interesting about him. He is one mysterious, he's an enigma. So he's, yeah, he's an enigma. I don't know whether to believe uh, what I read or I, I just, I don't know. I don't know about that man. It just seems like there was so much. He didn't write any books. He only um, had correspondences with other people. So, um, other witches like Doreen. Um, and yeah, Doreen uh, Valiente, I think that's how you say her name. I'm not 100% sure how to say that, but yes. That is, I mean, it's just so much about him does not make sense to me. I mean, he claimed his aunt was a witch. His, and then his, you know, his uh, nephew claimed that, you know, nothing, you know, that was all fake and lies. And so I don't know. I really honestly don't know. And he is the one that came, you know, he started the clan of the Tubal Cain. So either he created it all himself or it was just, I don't know. No clue. But let's do some coffee talk because it's been forever. And I have a lot of stuff I have to do today, which sucks. If I can get this to pop up. It's like everything is taking forever lately. But yeah, the roles of yeah, the people in the coven and you know, I just think that's it's pretty interesting. It really is. I like that. I like the way that he is describing all of that. So it's actually pretty interesting. But yeah, if you're not in a coven, then I mean, you really don't have to worry too much about those different roles. And you know, you you are you. You know, you're you're solitary. Come on, YouTube. Let's move it. Thank you. been pretty interesting lately just I mean really being out in nature really becoming one with the land it's been I mean just amazing it's really been um, very inspiring it's been very uh, refreshing it's been very rejuvenating uh, rejuvenate before it's too late <laughs> uh, and that's an Eartha, quit, it, Eartha kit quote Okay. Uh, Smoky Shake. Hey. Hi. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. YouTube Cat. What is it? A rose? Oh, that's cute. Burns the Dragon TV. Burns. I have to love it. I have to heart your, heart your comment. Thanks for the call out. Everybody, check out Burns the Dragon TV right here on YouTube. And make sure you click that little bell so you get all the notifications about his body modifications because it's insanely amazing. You just love you to death, Burns. So, all right, Teresa Walker, thank you so much. Oh, you're reading. Thank you. You're very welcome. I hope it helped. I do. Smoky Shake. Woo, fellow Virgo. Yes, yes, all the way. I am a Virgo. It's it's sickening. <laughs> Miss K M Kiss. Hi, when is he going to... One, uh, one live again? Um, I'll be live probably tomorrow. Maybe. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Lisa Oaks. Oh, I love listening to your voice. Thank you, my love. I love you. Hmm. Hello, Nikki Davis. Shout out. Medina Ray. Hi. Um, I don't know how to say your name. What? World... World's Tallest Drummer? Cool. Oh, the Swami Talking Board Review. I haven't had a, a board review in a long time. Thank you. 
The taller, are you really? How tall are you? I, I would love to know. Um, Kevin Green quit posting um, pornographic uh, crap. You are um, gone. Sorry. Well, no, actually, I'm not. Shara Harris. Hi, my love. I love your hair. You're always looking good. I don't feel like you, but thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you. Lisa Oaks. Uh, I don't wanna, I don't know how to butcher your name, I don't wanna butcher your name. Hello from India, hi! I love India, I love everything about India. Skyly Sullivan, I love you so much, Shara Harris. Ha! <laughs> Cindy Miller, hello my love. Gustavo, hi my brother, I love you very much. I love you guys very much, all of you. With all my heart, Lady Witch, hello. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are healthy, happy, joyful. And just, yeah, getting everything that you deserve, so. <laughs> but alright, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. So, everybody have a good day. Try to. But again, subscribe to Burns. If you're not, you know, if you're new to this channel, subscribe down here. Hit that little button, and then that little bell, and then ding, you'll get a notification when I go live. In case you guys want don't want to miss me going live. And I always post it on my Twitter, so. It just... Once I post it to my public page, it goes everywhere, so I don't know how, why, and, I, yeah, I did something, and it made it to where it just went everywhere, so I'm shutting up. I love you guys. <laughs> All the way from Venus. All the way back now. There we go. So, I'll see you guys tomorrow. So, yeah, everybody have a good day. Try to enjoy this nice weather, and, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.